continue our reading of Shibad Bhagavatam, Canto 9, Chapter 6, The Downfall of Shubhari Muni, text number 9. <coughs> Chapriyam Strinam Savin Chit Savin Chit Chapriyam Strinam Sharatu Hamasam Mataha Sharatu Hamasam Mataha Sharatu Parita Ejakam Parita Ejakam Bari parita e jatta, bari parita e jatta, iti haham prachudarita, iti haham prachadarita, iti haham prachadarita, savin chicha priyam srinam, savin chicha priyam srinam, charato hamma sammata, charato hamma sammata, bari parita e jatta, bari parita Iti haham prachudari taha, iti haham prachudari taha. Savinchita priyam strinam, savinchita priyam strinam. Jarato hamasana mataha, jarato hamasana mataha. Bali palita e jatka, bali palita e jatka. Itya ham pajudari taha. Translation of verse 41 and 42. <coughs> so Barimuni thought, I am now feeble. I am now feeble because of old age. My hair has become grey 
my skin is slack and my head always trembles. Beside, I'm a yogi. Therefore, women do, do not like me. Since the king has just rejected me, I shall reform my body in such a way as to be desirable even to celestial women, not to speak of the daughters of worldly kings. There's no purpose, so text 43. Muni Praveshita Kshetra Kanyata. Translation. Therefore, when Shaubari Muni became quite a young and beautiful person, the messenger of the palace took him inside the residential quarters of the princesses which were extremely opulent. All 50 princesses then accepted him as their husband, although he was only one man. Text 44. Tasam karira budbo yamst, tam harte ko yamsum ridam, mamaluru, mamaluru po na yamba, iti tat gata chetasam. Translation. Therefore, the princesses, being attracted by Sobarumuni, gave up their sisterly relationship and quarreled among themselves, each one of them contending, this man is just suitable for me and not for you. In this way, there ensued a great desire. and 46. Sabha Vicham Tabir Apanariya Tapashriya Nakya Paricham Vishu Griyeshu Nano Pavanamma Griyeshu Nano Pavanamma Namma Rashu Sogandika Kanyeshu Maharasa Yashana Vashtrabushana Nana Nulepa Bhyavaharam Malyakai Svalankrita Stri Pureshu Nichada Remenu Gayad Vija Bringa Bandishu Translation and Purpur Naishi Prabhupada Because Shobhara Muni was expert in chanting mantra perfectly, his severe austerities resulted in an opulent home with garments, ornaments, properly dressed and dispensed decorated mud servant and the man servant and varieties of parks with clear water, lakes and garden. In the gardens, fragrant with varieties of flowers, bird chipped and bees hummed, surrounded by professional singers. Sobaramuni's house was amply provided with valuable belts, seats, ornaments and arrangement for bedding and there were varieties of sandalwood creams, flower garlands, and palatable dishes. Thus, surrounded by opulent paraphernalia, the Muni engaged in family affairs with his numerous wives. Purport. <coughs> Shambhari Muni was a great yogi. <coughs> Yogic perfection makes a valuable eight material opulences. Anima, Nagima, Mahima, Prapti, Prakamya, Ishitva, Vashitva, and Kamava Saida. Shabari Muni exhibited superb excellence in material enjoyment by dint of his yogic perfection. The word Bhavicha means expert in chanting mantras, as material, material opulence can be achieved by ordinary material means can be also be achieved by subtle means through mantras. By chanting mantras, Shobari Muni arranged for material opulence, but this was not perfection in his life. As will be seen, Shobari Muni became very dissatisfied with material opulence and thus left everything and re 
entered the forest in the Vanaprastha order and achieved final success. Those who are not Atma Tadvavit, who do not know the spiritual value of life, can be satisfied with external material appearances. But those who are Atma Tadvavit are not inspired by material appearance. This is the instruction we can derive from the life and activities of Sobri Muni. <coughs> Amaganatimi dandasya, gananjana shakana, chachurumi damye natas by shibura mitaha. She chaitanya mano bishtam shtapitam in a bunta, swayarupa karamanyam dadati swaparakitam. He Krishna karina sindhu dina mandi chakapa. Go pisha go pika kanta rada kanta namuskuti. Tap the kanchana gorangi dadi vinda maheshwari vishama muskuti vipramana mahari priji. Anchakarpata rubya sakri pasindu yaga chapadita no pamani bim vaishnavi bim no maha. Krishna chaitanya pramani chananda ashi advaita garada ashi vasari guru bhakta vinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Savinchita priyam srinam charatu ham masam mataha, mani parita e chapka. Iti haham pratyudarhita Sambari Muni thought I am now feeble because of old age My hair has become grey My skin is slack and my head always trembles Besides, I am a yogi Therefore women do, like, do not like me Since the king has just rejected me I shall reform my body in such a way as to be desirable Even to celestial women what to speak of the daughters of worldly kings. <coughs> so we see in this uh, very meaningful uh, story the power of uh, Mahamaya uh, who is uh, subjugating every living entities and even those who try to get rid of its influence uh, like Sobhuri Muni who was not particularly a, um, a devotee but was an extremely austere uh, yogi who was able to perform austerities uh, deep in water for thousands of years, because uh, this probably happened during uh, Satya or long, 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 long time ago, because nobody can do such things nowadays. Almost nobody can do such things nowadays. <coughs> so even he was engaged in such a lonely place as not to be disturbed in the, in the deep uh, river, the Yamuna. Uh, still, it happened that uh, he was, in spite of all his endeavor to be uh, secluded, uh, his mind was still with him. And uh, at a small disturbance, the mind rushed like a, a leak in a boat. Uh, if you don't do something, then it becomes uh, uh, catastrophic and even you. Uh, what happened to Saburi Muni. He, he sank in the ocean of material desire and uh, he could not uh, subjugate uh, this temptation that happened when two fishes were copulating uh, where he was meditating in the river. So, uh, actually, that's the case of uh, all living entities that are subjugating by uh, sexual attraction. They can't avoid it because it's a, it's a package uh, 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 included in, in, uh, in, with the material body. When you get in the material atmosphere, you are obliged to be covered by a material body and uh, material desires as well because you can't escape. The, the, the mind is like a sponge 
and is obliged to be uh, um, <coughs> influenced to the gates of the senses by all the different circumstances that are around it, the living entity. It's unavoidable. So the spiritualist is advised to understand uh, through spiritual knowledge uh, how to filter these influences that are mainly uh, the three gunas. Uh, ignorance, passion, goodness, <coughs> and eventually get rid of the, the three gunas. And like Krishna says to Arjuna, tre guna vishaya veda, nish tre guna mava Arjuna. Um, go ahead, uh, the three topics, the three main topics of the Veda that deal about the three gunas and be situated in, 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 in uh, transcendence. So, before being situated in transcendence, we have to understand what are these three gunas. And to see, actually, when we understand the three gunas, we understand uh, where we are and where to go and where not to go. Like uh, the three uh, primary colors from the sun, uh, yellow, red, and blue, you have all these different combinations. And uh, it reflects in different objects and gives you the impression that so many colors are here. So the trigunas are the same way and they reflect and uh, they bounce on your mind and they influence your mind with different colors according to their influence on the sense object that you are obliged, obliged to capture, to, to be influenced. <coughs> then we understand how Krishna expressed in um, Bhagavad Gita and uh, also stresses the same in uh, 11 canto in the Bhagavad Gita uh, or to recognize the trigunas and systematically to be uh, at least influenced by the mode of goodness in order to be able to transcend so if artificially we think we are above this influence of the trigunas, like we have the tendency to be when, you, when we are young devotees, we, we think we are uh, practically, uh, uh, especially when in the past time we were above the laws of the material nature, the laws of the governments, we were above so many laws, and uh, it really happened that it was not the case after some time. We realized uh, we have to, like Pope, he say you have to be, to respect the laws of the government, the law of the material nature, you have to respect them. Don't think you, uh, don't expect the moon, don't think the devotees are so highly advanced that they can transcend on the trigona all of a sudden. It takes time, and it takes also discrimination and sharpening the intelligence with knowledge to understand uh, the influence of the three gunas. So here, uh, so the tendency also is here uh, that we think we are advanced and uh, <laughs> we can transcend so easily the three gunas. Uh, it's not so easily uh, attained, like we see the. This yogi was such an advanced personality. And uh, a little tinge of passion then agitated his mind and uh, uh, he, he went into the, the trip of material and enjoyment with the princesses, the marriage, the house and like that. Um, <coughs> but he did it in a way uh, that at the end uh, he understood the lesson. So the Kriyashta Ashram is organized in such a way that, yes, uh, enjoyment is available, wife is available, uh, don't uh, stress your mind like a, a pressure cooker. Uh, you can have this part of enjoyment, but do it in such a way that uh, you don't become uh, uh, too attached into it. Don't put your heart into it. Uh, you may externally make it 
or arrangement like that, but your heart, you should save it for Krishna. This is basically uh, how the spiritualist uh, undergoes uh, the, the penance and the, the after some time we realize that the Gryasta Ashram is a penance and is kind of austerity. <coughs> but at the beginning you don't see it this way. You will see happy, wow, newly wet, moon, night, etc. You get uh, like intoxicated. Uh, <coughs> uh, you can't avoid it. It's part of the deal also. And uh, here we see that Tsobori Muni, he took some great endeavor to uh, come to the level of the worldly king and their princesses. Uh, he was so advanced, but he, he, he realized that he could not, uh, he could not marry the woman unless he changed his attitude and to a certain extent, and his body as well. We have the same story with Vyasadev. Uh, in the Mahabharat, when he was asked to uh, generate some uh, children because there was a lack of hairs for the crown, the Astinapur uh, crown, uh, he, he was not so beautiful to be seen. And uh, he asked to one year to uh, Saras, um, The daughter of the fisherman, uh, Sat no, Satyavati, no, Sarasvati, Satyavati. So Satyavati asked him to generate some hair for the crown, and uh, he was reluctant. He knew, but Satyavati was passionate in the sense that she wanted it to be done right on the spot. More, that was a mistake in a sense. Because uh, in spite of the advice of Vyasadev, Vyasadev uh, went uh, to see the three princesses, Ambika, Ambalika, and... Uh, Amba. I don't know. Amba. 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 Ambalika Amba. went in austerities a little. Yeah, and Amba. So the, uh, they were really afraid of seeing Vyasadev in such a uh, ugly and uh, distasteful for, according to their mind. And uh, it disturbed them in the process of creation of the, of the children, because uh, some imperfections were there, because uh, one was pale, because uh, she was pale. Uh, when uh, she uh, conceived the child, and uh, the, the other one was blind because she closed her eyes uh, of, because of being disgusted uh, when she conceived uh, the terror shot, actually. So uh, we can see through the story of the uh, Vyasta Ashram and the conception of children, it's, it's a, a very uh, special science and uh, um, in Krishna consciousness, we have to understand that the tuning of the mind and the consciousness, especially at the time of procreation, is important uh, because it will uh, determine the quality of the consciousness that the children will get afterwards. It's not casualty like that. It will happen that the uh, mixing of the consciousness of the, uh, the wife and husband uh, will give uh, room to uh, someone who, uh, who is advanced, is, uh, is the two partners are advanced. So, this the whole concept of conception is a whole affair of yogic uh, concentration of the mind in order to uh, get uh, good progeny. This science is completely unknown in our material world. People have no all these great graduate, doctorate, and 
doctors and uh, uh, ch ch uh, chercheurs, those who are literally uh, excavating the molecule and to, to try to get knowledge how to do things, how to manipulate molecules. That's no idea of uh, uh, invoking some children, some special beings, it's a whole subtle affair of the mind. <coughs> and uh, uh, it is something important that only the devotees and the spiritualists they can understand. That's why the situation of our society is completely uh, topsy-turvy because nobody has uh, any idea how to conceive good progeny. This science is completely uh, <coughs> even unthinkable for most of people. So we see also that Shobara uh, Muni uh, understood after some time that uh, to be married with so many wives is not such a good idea. <laughs> uh, because they started to quarrel and uh, to induce jealousy and uh, fighting between themselves. So he was like a lone, beautiful man and so many women uh, being wanted to take advantage and, uh, of his uh, preference and uh, it makes him uh, an, uh, in a uh, difficult situation like someone who is attracted by all the senses uh, he doesn't know what what to do uh, <coughs> he just finds the situation uh, unpalatable he was thinking the situation will satisfy me and like, but after some times Maya makes him understand that um, there is so many problems and uh, so married life is like that we can satisfy senses to our extent but the deal is that you satisfy your, your senses but you produce children and if you want to be uh, pleasing Krishna then you educate your, your, your children in such a, a, a spiritual way. It's like dealing with material energy. You can extract, in, in the mode of ignorance, you just um, plunder the riches of women or the earth or the air or the earth or the inter or whatever. You, you, you're cheap. Your pi pi pirate, 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 pirate. Uh, we see our society, or Occident, the, the Western world is like that with uh, Africa, America, South America, the poor country are poor because they are being ransacked. This is the method of exploiting at the maximum, raping women, taking for our own benefit. This is completely ignorance. Passion is a way to make it uh, the, more or less the same, but for all people. And uh, goodness is you do in a regulated way. You marry it or you exploit the earth and you try to make everybody um, with the same riches, more or less. The riches go in every pocket and it is understood uh, what not to be done and what <coughs> not to be done. And in the mode of goodness, you use all these things for Krishna. So you enjoy your wife, but you produce children, and you especially educate children. Because begetting takes a, uh, a few minutes, uh, but uh, educating a child takes uh, quite a long time. <laughs> not so easy. And it takes a lot of endeavor, money, relationship, uh, material management, all these things we have to, to understand. It's a big affair. <coughs> so, Griasta have to foresee, they have to expect that in the future 
they will have children and they will go to school and they will have to uh, educate, give their own education uh, all together with the material education. They will have to, obviously, they will have to give them bed, uh, clothes, uh, jewels, all kinds of things for the family. Establishing a temple, it's a war. Uh, it's like, in a sense, for a devotee, like a recreating uh, another temple of the temple in a miniature scale. So the devotee, the future Vyasta, must expect that if he wants to marry and do uh, his spiritual life, he has to make a projection of what is going on in the temple and to make it reduced at his own little scale. Not just the woman is there, we go vacation, we travel, we get children, and then uh, the rest we forget. Well, yeah, <laughs> this is the main thing. <laughs> this is the main thing. <coughs> so here, and we have also to expect that family life is not so, so palatable sometimes, because the wife uh, sometimes is not uh, fit for us. And we get angry with them, and the children as well. They don't go the way we want. We have to tolerate that, but at the same time, we have to, uh, to make our, our way and to show oh, Krishna, how to please Krishna. No, this is not so easy. Because every one of us is uh, basically rebellious toward Krishna at the origin, and you have to curb this little by little. You cannot do too much with a stick, uh, like you are in a highway going to hell, and you cannot all of a sudden turn your wheel and go out of the highway. You have to make arrangement to slowly, slowly, you take the right hand lane and you go away and uh, take some arrangement. Uh, you have to see uh, if you are too, uh, too uh, strong, you get an accident, you crash. <laughs> That's the reality. So uh, here, Sobari Muni, uh, he got the fruits, but also he understood uh, that it was uh, not such a good thing. And uh, after a while, he, uh, <coughs> because he was already quite advanced and quite renounced, and all these garlands, big chopping, bees humming, nice garlands, nice sandalwood creams, Palatable dishes, valuable beds, all these things. He understood. Wow. The whole machinery of Maya is there. But he was, in a way, uh, he was aloof because the result of his austerity may, made him understand that uh, it was not his real trip. So, Grihastha life is also. Uh, arranged in such a way as to show us these things. And uh, little by little, especially when we become old, and uh, that uh, our body becomes a burden, the uh, boy and girls, they go away, far away sometimes. Uh, the wife becomes uh, also not so easy to be with, and uh, uh, the the body becomes like uh, sturdy and uh, heavy and uh, diseased and all these things. And uh, gradually you are supposed to become detached and the wife also. And we understand all the, the world of Griesta affair. It has been a trip for 20, 30, 40 years and uh, uh, now we should be serious and uh, regain our interest for Krishna that have been, uh, because we are still alive, means we are quite diverted. We are quite di diverted. So, uh, Srila Prabhupada would say that spiritual advancement in Griyasta life is not so easy and is slow, 
And, uh, um, but what to do? That's the way that uh, most of the people we have to go to uh, this session. And we have to be happy if even after so many years we are still devoted. Uh, I see that most of the people I was in when I joined in the, my 30s and 20s, late like that, uh, they're not here anymore. They married or they went astray or they do so many things. Um, most of them are not here. We have to realize that the flux of material elements and circumstances are divide, diverting the people here and there so much. We have to be astonished at, uh, to find uh, so many little people still uh, still maintaining the, the material life, the spiritual life, even after uh, having <coughs> undergone so many uh, the divert uh, lilas and uh, <laughs> stories here and there. <coughs> but nevertheless, the story is that even if we get diverted, the arrangement of Krishna is there to show that this uh, diversion was not so enjoyable. It was hollow. It was tasteless. Because the devotees, they have this, uh, uh, the advantage of gaining this higher taste, even sometimes, not always, sometimes. But they get the memory of it. And this makes them remember that there was a time when they were enjoying something that they could not get in their material arrangement and material enjoyment. <coughs> And they make, that makes them eligible to restart their spiritual life later on or in a future life. And maybe some uh, comments or questions about these, uh, these verses that we read, because it's a classical story of most of spiritualists, especially in Krishna consciousness. Most of us, we will, we will go through this kind of uh, pastime ourselves for some time uh, in a way or another because we were staunch prematurely, most of us, book distribution, shard and distribution, all these things, austerity, marathon, this, that, that. But after some time, we get, uh, we want to change a little our life and we find some companion and uh, uh, we partake uh, uh, quite a long time of uh, our life with, with her or him. Because two, two persons are most important for the devotee, the spiritual master and the wife, because you, are, you will have to spend a lot, a lot of time with them. And they will, uh, enable you to make also tremendous material and spiritual advancement. Oh, yeah. oh. Yes, uh, you just mentioned that before there was more devotees and after joining the Grihastha, they moved a bit far from the temple. Yeah, I can read this now. Yes. You just mentioned that before there were more devotees and after joining the Grihast, most of them, majority, moved far from the temple. Yeah, that's normally, that's, uh, that's normally the, the scheme in India traditionally. But in the West, the situation is happening also. But Prabhupada wanted the Griasta not to go too far away, in uh, uh, geographically speaking, from the temple, and also in in a term of connection with the temple. So in this case, as you just mentioned, that uh, if we take the Griasta, so it is disadvantage in a way that is our. Due to the grihasta, they're moving for? Yeah, we have some grihasta who stay in the temple and who do tremendous service. 
but <coughs> the majority of them will not stay, will not be able to stay in the temple. Because to stay in the temple, you have to be a great star, a little renounced, uh, a little austere, and uh, if you live really in the temple, uh, you have to be separated from your wife. Your wife will be living in the uh, ladies' quarter, and yourself will uh, elsewhere. So no, everybody is ready for such accommodation. Or you have, uh, like here, you can have your wife uh, beside you, but you have to special regulation or so if you live in the property like that. And you, if you live outside, you, st you still should have all the same uh, arrangement in your life. Um, but your connection is, uh, is more difficult because you geographically, the, the, the farther you are, and uh, you must be autonomous in your spiritual life after. So Prabhupada envisioned a kind of uh, Griasta uh, association around, uh, around the temple, mostly, not too far, so that they can gather uh, um, during a festival or during uh, the end of the day or like that. Prabhupada wanted the world revolution because uh, in India it, it was so much organized long time ago that the people would gather together to listen to Bhagavatam or, or play some kartal at the end, play some uh, <coughs> at the end of the day, of each day. It was like a big family. The real family life was, uh, the real village life was there was a temple and uh, all the Griasta were cultivating their fields and gathering uh, at every opportunity uh, with kirtan and feasting and like that. <coughs> be it the Kadashi, be it the end of the day, be it the Sunday or this festival or that festival. It was the, the, ideally it was organized this way. And uh, Sri Prabhupada wanted to organize the same system uh, in the West but it will, uh, it, it will come gradually like that. Thank you very much, Prabhu, for the talks. Um, what, would you, what would you suggest uh, to brahmacharis who don't want to go? I mean, I went through Kailas with Grihasta Ashram, not married, but engaged. But how yes, would you suggest to stay inspired in Brahmachari? There's two kinds of, of Brahmachari. There is a duck-like Brahmachari uh, who tolerates and uh, the rain doesn't do anything to him. It doesn't yeah. get wet. Like, uh, and the Brahmachari who is uh, uh, quite allergic. That is uh, really aloof. Those who tolerate and those who um, they don't tolerate, they, they get to escape. Uh, what I would uh, suggest to Brahmachari who... Who wants to be strong in Brahmachari Ashram? The, the main aspect to, to be in such a situation, uh, situated solidly, is your determination to keep company of other Brahmachari, yes. and the best is to do Sankirtan, book distribution. You can do long, long, long time, or to find a team where you have other Brahmachari, or to find a service where there is a lot of Brahmacharis. Not so, or to find a temple where there is a lot of Brahmachari also. Uh, you have to arrange your life in such a way. You go to Padayatra Indra, the time being now, nowadays, there is mostly Brahmacharis. It's a good idea to stay with them for quite some time. If you go to the kitchen, there's a lot of women. Uh, it was, uh, who was the speaker who were here last summer, Prabhupada said to him, he was a servant. He said, if you don't want to marry, don't go to the kitchen. 
But in a way, well, he was engaged in the kitchen and he got married. Some services are like that. It is not a material arrangement to select where to go, where not to go, what service to go, because uh, um, you have your, your desires and uh, what you want to do, etc. It's not my art to, do, to make arrangements like that. Like uh, for, uh, to make arrangements where you want to serve, which we steam, with association and like that. It's your legitimate uh, right. <laughs> Thank you very much for the wonderful class. I just wonder with that question if trying to, like you said, go on Padiatra may be similar to Sabari Muni trying to perform austerities under the water for thousands of years, but his mind was still attached to sense gratification. So it's kind of like you can run, but you can't hide, you know? So would it, would it not be more advantageous to absorb the mind in Param Drishlana Vartate, something higher, and then you can even be amidst the, prob the, the objects of attachment, but you're not attached to them? Because otherwise you can try to run away, but wherever you go, you said at the beginning, wherever you go, there is your mind still, if, right? Even if you are not uh, uh, successful as a, uh, an Ashtika Brahmachari, but the longer you stay Brahmachari, the best it is for you, because you'll be more renounced. And even if you have to marry, you, you, you will go through without attachment. Like Sobhani Muni, he got for some time, uh, we can say he took some vacation, a break from his austerity <laughs> for a few 10, 50 years, 100 years, I don't know. But in the flood of, of eternity, uh, it's a spark, it's nothing. We see it a big affair like that, but for Krishna it's just... And also, uh, the other side of the story is that Shobari uh, Muni, because he got some, uh, he was engaged, and he, he got offensive toward Gauda. Mm -hmm. And he got a uh, result of his uh, offensive mentality through this pastime. Mm -hmm. It was a kind of chastisement, we can say it like that. But at the same time, he became more mature, and uh, why he lose some time, if we can say it like that? Uh, but it's not a big affair. We can say we lose sometimes in the, we are losing time and energy in the Griasta ashram. Uh, but uh, it's also something we have to go through. And uh, we come out with uh, more mature, more understanding of the philosophy, etc. It makes us more renounced, you know. Gantara Shimad Bhagavatam Ki Shimpra Oban Ki Morti Gantara Shimad Bhagavatam Ki